It's our honor and privilege at this time to recognize and to honor the graduates uh, from both high school and college who are members here at Glory Day Lutheran Church. We are delighted to recognize our high school and college graduates who are members here at Glory Day Lutheran Church. It is our privilege to affirm these members of the, of the congregation who have completed one phase of their lives and move with expectations on to another and who have been valiant, who have been patient, and who have been resilient, and who have finished strong even in the midst of this pandemic. Today, we recognize our high school graduates, Madison, Sarah, Sam, and Mercedes, as well as our college graduates, Megan, Marissa, and Becca. Graduates, as you celebrate your achievements and prepare to begin new endeavors, be mindful of your grounding in faith and your vocation to serve God in your life, in your work, in, and in all of your accomplishments. Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless your servants with many achievements. We give thanks especially for the milestone that these Glory Day graduates have attained in their graduations. As they begin new phases of their lives, may they also know your love and experience your peace in all they encounter. Bless also the parents of these students who have raised their children and nourished them in the Christian faith. Give them strength for, for your continuing presence and joy at their students' achievements and peace at their calling as parents as they enter a new phase of their lives as well. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Good morning and welcome to worship. I am Jerry Manschult, uh, the Bishop of the East Central Synod of Wisconsin, and I and members of my staff are leading the liturgy today as we celebrate uh, the Feast of the Holy Trinity. We are especially grateful that our presiding bishop, uh, the Reverend Elizabeth Eaton, uh, will be reading the gospel and is providing the sermon for this day. Uh, we're also grateful that Deacon John White and members of the worship staff of our churchwide offices um, we're grateful to them for preparing this liturgy of the Word. 
We are in the midst of a very painful time in this country. It's a time uh, for us um, to come before God in prayer. It's a painful time uh, following the uh, horrific death uh, of George uh, Floyd and uh, the ensuing uh, protests and demonstrations. It's a time for us to pray, to listen deeply to the cries of a hurting people, to acknowledge the sins of our racist past, and to commit ourselves to love one another and to stand in solidarity with those who have been the victims of racial injustice. With humility, let us come before God, be open to God's presence and power among us. With Job of old, we cry out, everywhere the innocent suffer, our desires and efforts achieve us little. O God, are you good, yet do nothing to help us? Our answers have holes, and we fall through. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear us, O God. Hear us, O God. Revive us with hope. Revive us with hope. Give us your life. Give us your life. Hear these words and receive their power. The majesty of God the Father undergirds all that is. The mercy of God the Son accepts our despair. The comfort of God the Spirit embraces us in communities of care. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And so it was. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, planting yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in the divine image. In the image of God, humankind was created. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for, good, for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that had been made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that had been done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that had been done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. 
These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. A reading from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You, whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouth of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that should be mindful of them, human beings that should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor, you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, How majestic is your name in all the earth. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Arbery. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade, have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's First lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger. And all of God shows up, all of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. 
I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. 
in the face of the reality and equity and equity of racial injustice anger is appropriate is appropriate but we use our anger to bring about change we put out fires set to stores workplaces churches and property but we ask the spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice we work for calm and quiet throughout our country but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves we work for peace but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place no the peace god alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act the trinity is a relationship within god with creation with us and among us until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering it will not be safe to be black or brown in america and until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story we are not open to the relationship that god wants to shower share lavish upon us as a relational god a loving god as a god of the trinity as a god who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other paul's second letter to the corinthians ends the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all it's actually a promise and i think marching orders for us the grace of our lord jesus christ is with us the love of god is with us the communion of the holy spirit is with us and together in the communion and community of the holy trinity we can make that a reality amen
justice and joy for young and for old a place at the table a voice to be heard a part in the song the hands of a child in hands that your pain and ask for God's grace through anger and hurt a mindset of mercy for just and unjust a new Join us as we profess our faith together in the triune God with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered into the mystery of the Trinity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news of Jesus Christ and in prayer and action, strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community leaders in this time of unrest. Further the work of advocates who pursue justice in often ignored communities, like Chief Seattle, whom we commemorate today. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all mourning the death of your beloved child, George Floyd. Hold in your loving embrace all experience, experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. Provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, you accompany us in sickness and suffering. Bring relief to all afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever, especially those in prison or care facilities. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day, especially those whose names we carry in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A prayer for the power of the Spirit among the people of God, we pray. 
God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.